Uh, let me just start by saying I really, really don't like the society we're living in. Um, uh, I feel that 30 years of Thatcherism and then more years of Tony Blair's Blatcherism turned us into a nation of dog-eat-dog, shop-till-you-drop, it could be you, <laughs> consumer junkies, credit fueled. And I say that as a preface because I really think that the ruling elite we have in charge uh, at the moment have completely uh, disappeared off into outer space. They've lost connection with the rest of us. And the book I'm going to talk about is, is at least a small way, in a very simple way, uh, that perhaps you as individuals, if you have a three to 12 year old child, can make some kind of connection back. But I cannot stress to you strongly enough the extent to which we've been poisoned. You may not think you've been poisoned, uh, but I really think our, our goals, our motives, our values have gone to pot. And I can illustrate it with a story about a charity worker in a town who notes that the chairman of the largest company in the town has never given anything to charity. And this uh, charity worker goes and makes an appointment with him and goes to see him and says, uh, excuse me, you know, uh, would you mind terribly um, contributing something? And he says, well, uh, did you know that uh, my ex-wife has to look after our disabled daughter 24 hours a day and that costs an awful lot of money? No, I'm so sorry, I didn't know that. And did you know that both my parents have Alzheimer's and require nursing home care? No, I, I am sorry to hear that. And did you know that my sister was dumped by her ex-husband and left in poverty with four children? No, I, I'm really sorry to hear that. Well, if I don't support them in any way, what on earth makes you think I'm going to give to charity? <laughs> And I do think that that is where we're at, where our, really, our revolving door ruling elite, as shown by the Leveson Inquiry, that's who those people are. Um, and I say that partly to just get it off my chest, but partly also to uh, point out that one of the offshoots of this uh, affluenza-stricken society that we live in is that it's, we all are terribly time-starved. Uh, an awful lot of us have to work, both partners have to work. And as a result, in some cases, uh, children maybe don't get all the love they need. Um, and uh, at here, I'm going to speak about an antidote to that. And the idea is incredibly simple. It's the idea that you take your 3 to 12-year-old away uh, for a period of time. It might be a short, away from the rest of the family. And it might be as short as just a Saturday afternoon, many Mothers have emailed me saying that that's all they've done. Uh, it may be as long as a whole weekend away. But what you do is create a love bombing zone in which you provide the child with a very intense, condensed experience of feeling loved and in control. And I am amazed by what something as simple as that can achieve. It is not the same thing as quality time. And I'll come in a moment to give you a bit more detail of it. But before I give you more detail, I want to also drop another bombshell on you, along with the fact that we live in a hideous society. And it's that the Human Genome Project is proving, it really does seem as if it's proving, that genes play an incredibly small role, and certainly an astonishingly smaller than was predicted role, in explaining why you are different from your siblings or why your offspring are different from each other. So far, and it really does look as if this is probably it, they have only been able to show, that it, apart from with a small number of rare complaints, but when it comes to common traits like intelligence, personality, mental illness, psychological traits, uh, they really can't find anything 
that will explain more than a tiny bit, perhaps five, maximum 10% of the variance, the, the difference between your, your, your offspring or you, your, you siblings. And, I, and I, just to be clear about this, uh, it's, you know, the situation they've got to is that they're coming up with the most extraordinary, wild and unsubstantiated so far for the most part alternatives to what we were led to expect this eight billion pounds of expenditure was going to lead to. Uh, they uh, are, are a bit as like when you leave your mobile phone at the office and you get home, everybody is brought out, the whole family, to search for it. Obviously, the first thing you do is ring it on the landline. That doesn't produce anything. You look under the bed, you look behind the sofa, you look in your bag, you look in your bag again, you go back to the car and look in there. Eventually, you cannot find it. Now, what is it going to take for you to admit that your hypothesis that you definitely did have it when you left is not right? <laughs> And they, they are like somebody in that situation at the moment. They are, they are for example, hypothesizing that what, was, what we were told with absolute confidence on the, DNA, on the chromosomes was junk genes, uh, that these junk genes actually, in fact, are going to provide the answer. Well, actually, if you talk to molecular geneticists, they know damn well that that's extremely unlikely to be the case. Uh, but these people need to go on getting their research funds. So uh, they've got to come up with something. And it's a bit like if you've, you still can't find the mobile phone, it's as though you start saying, well, I, I've always had a real doubt about ghosts. But you know, maybe the ghost has borrowed it. Anyway, if it's not in your genes, what is it? Well, there is an absolute torrent of evidence whereas the, 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 that suggests it has to do with the quality of your care in the first six years, uh, that that sets your electrochemical thermostat. And it's with that uh, preface that I tell you about this method, because what I'm saying to you is that particularly between 3 and 12, it's only a thermostat, what, pretty, not whatever happened, but pretty much whatever happened between 0 and 6 or 0 and 3. Uh, children are massively more plastic than was thought. I'm not saying that it applies necessarily to adults. It's a whole other question to what extent therapy, for example, can solve your problems as an adult. That very much remains to be seen. It, it, it is a thermostat. People can make amazing changes in, in what they're like, and we probably all know people who have, uh, perhaps some of, some of you have. Uh, I certainly grappled with myself over many, many years to try and change myself. It's remarkably hard. Um, but nonetheless, uh, when it comes to three to 12 year olds, uh, it's amazing what can be achieved. And this method uh, originally arose because I was doing a television series for the Richard and Judy show, the This Morning show. And I actually did three series. And on the first morning of, of production, they came up to me and they said, Right, what we're going to do is we're going to take you to see a family with a child who has got lots of problems. You're going to spend the day with the family. You're going to tell them what to do. We'll come back in two weeks later and the child will have been cured. <laughs> I said, right, okay. Um, and luckily for me, I happened to read a paper that was reporting something that sort of had some of the elements of love bombing in it. And so what I started doing was telling these parents to just try uh, getting the child away from the rest of the family and giving it uh, you know, a, 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 an experience of intense, uh, a, a condensed love and control. And I would come back to you weeks later, and I was absolutely flabbergasted by the outcomes. For instance, there was a little girl, I think she was seven, um, and she was a monster. I mean, she had, she was, uh, her doctor was all set to stick, stuff the Ritalin down her. Um, she was trouble, that girl. Um, and her mother only spent 24 hours with her. And I did, I swear, I came back two weeks later, we filmed it, and it really was amazing how much calmer she was. Um, and her mother was astonished. Um, so, how am I doing for time? Five minutes. <laughs> uh, the first thing you do with love bombing is to, put, to make a pitch to a child. Now, this should not be a difficult pitch. Uh, you say to them, how would you feel about having some time alone with me in which you are going to choose everything that we do? Uh, uh, and they say, 
uh, well, in the case of which I describe in the book uh, some examples of over-controlling mothers, which many of us get sucked into being over-controlling just because that's the way children are and they, they are very, dom you know, they, they, they're very demanding. And we get, you know, we can very easily try and deal with that by, by minutely, uh, you know, observing them and trying to control what they do. And in the case of over-controlling, children of over-controlling mothers, of course, they say, yeah, right, I believe you. You're going to let me decide exactly what I want to do. And uh, incredibly, within very short periods of time, in most cases, uh, the, the child moves away from just saying, I want to buy all the sweets in the supermarket. And this basic equation that exists in this society between love and money or love and possessions or love and food uh, it disappears when the child actually feels loved. So anyway, you explain it to the child. You make, you make your sales pitch. Surprise, surprise, the child uh, says, yeah, right. Um, you start making lists of things you might do. The child is leading this all the way. The child gives it a name. The child decides what, what's going to happen. And then off you go. Now, uh, depending on your financial circumstances, depending if you're a single parent, depending on all sorts of things, uh, it is enormously flexible. You can just do it for an afternoon. You can uh, get your uh, parents to come and look after the other children and go and be in your parents' house. You can, of course, go and stay in the Savoy if you can afford it. Um, you can do whatever, you, whatever, you, whatever is practical and reasonable, and, and there are many, many different variations described. And you spend the time away literally just tuning into a child. Yes, I do advocate perhaps you try and tell the child that you love it. Uh, you probably do already sometimes, but in the case of some very annoying children, you may not have said it recently. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, really, that's pretty much it. You, f you go with the child to the fun fair or to the film or sit watching a thousand episodes of SpongeBob Peck uh, SquarePants. Uh, in the case of an, a mother of an autistic child, she made a deal with a hotel. She it, did it five weekends away with her child in, in the same room in the same hotel in which they watched the same episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants. And it had the most amazing effect on that autistic child. Indeed, the extent to which autism is genetic is very much being questioned at the moment. Uh, People still, you, you can see if you read about this, the fullback position from the Human Genome Project where they were looking at the actual DNA is to go back to talking about twin studies. Twin studies are completely discredited by the Human Genome Project. Do not trust anyone who tells you that it's, that it's in your genes because of twin studies. Read, I'm very happy to email any of you, uh, the paper by J. Joseph, which uh, blasts twin studies out of the water. Anyway, um, you... You have your time away, and really, I, I'm not going to waste your time by elaborating on this. It is as simple as that. You simply hang out with your child, tell it you love it, and follow it wherever, it, wherever you go. Now, I know that all of you are going to say, hang on a second, but what happens if it says we ought to go up the Eiffel Tower and we've got to go flying uh, to outer space? The short answer to that is, great. You've got a fantasy which you can play with. Get back into being playful. Have, enjoy being with this child. And that's what's so incredible about love bombing. So many parents, I've had thousands of parents who bought the book, hundreds and hundreds of emails in which they describe these wonderful experience of being remem remembering why they were so glad that they were blessed with this child when it was born. Because it's very easy for all of us to go through periods, at least in our life, and I'm saying this applies to whatever your child is like. It really doesn't matter. Uh, your child may have obvious problems, or it may just be a normal child who has the normal problems. Love bombing will help enormously to reconnect you with your child. Uh, and, uh, you know, at, at its simplest, what's not to like about going away from the rest of the family, hanging out with your child, and having lots of fun? That's it. Thank you. <laughs>